Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm MV Arts. You can see this as a bonus video. This is another video in the series of rigging faces. So first let me show you in a bit more detail than the last video how I modeled the shapes. Uh, I imported in the blend file the picture as an image. I made a mesh that was a plane. I subdivided it a couple of times so I had a, a sort of an even grid. This is important uh, and you can see that later on. But I wanted to have it as evenly spaced as possible. So yeah, I delete the top ones here and the lower two rows. Then I go out of edit mode and right click, set origin to center of mass and surface. Now with the origin in the center, I can go back into edit mode. And here in edit mode in the T menu on the right hand side, under options, I enable X mirror. So that mirrors all the translations to the other side. So I'm just moving around to resemble the shape as best as I can while trying to keep a constant or an even space grid as much as possible. I know in some cases that this uh, might not always be possible, but you can, I hope at least, try the best and work it out. So I deleted the top one as well. And now I'm just shifting around the vertices. What I like to do when I select vertices or multiple edges even, I use Shift V to slide the vertices over the edges. Uh, that's quite a handy tool. I added in a edge loop on the right hand side and as you can see, it didn't copy it on the, right, on the left hand side. Um, but that's no problem, we can fix it in a minute. I'm just working to get a bit more of an evenly spaced mesh. Now I'm deleting the left hand side, selecting it again, go into the modifiers tab, add a new modifier that is the mirror modifier, and uh, apply the mirror modifier. And this is one of the ways I made a mouth shape. I added a subdivision modifier, as you can see, it's not perfectly aligned with the vector, but it doesn't really matter. Yeah, select like two edges and hit Shift V and slide over the edges. If you want, you can. If you want, you can add in more vertices, but I like to keep it lower, uh, and you can see why in a minute. So I create a new plane. Then I like to add a subdivision modifier. So this converts the plane into a circle with eight vertices. I like to apply this. And then selecting the three, oh, sorry. And then selecting the three polygons in the middle. I use inset to create a bit more resolution. This is important also for the shrink wrap. You have to have enough resolution so you can wrap it around the mesh. Now I'm just trying to roughly place it in the middle. Uh, first, let me scale it on the x-axis to make it a bit thinner. Then select the lower one, dragging this up and adjusting the proportional fall off. Now I like to select the whole mesh and scale it a bit down. I play around with the top ones, scale it a bit in from the sides and also scale it on the Z axis a tiny bit. Add a subdivision modifier. Just finish off with some tiny tweaks and this is basically how I did all of them. So there were two methods, I made a grid or I made a circular shape and you can see where these two will come in handy. So with all of the meshes in place and with the 3D cursor at its center you can do this with shift C. Uh, select this one and say shift S. Selection to cursor keep offset. If you don't use keep offset all the vertices will collapse into that single point but you don't want that of course. Now going into the vertex groups for this mesh making a new vertex group and calling this O, because it's an O shape. Uh, then I create another one and call this happy open, because it's the open mouth. And you can assign it. I did the wrong one, sorry. I removed it, select O, assign, select the happy open and assign that to the vertex group as well. I did this for the rest of the meshes as well. Creating a vertex group, selecting the mesh and hitting assign. I like to come up with names that are descriptive, so that's easy to find while I'm animating. Whenever you're done, you can go into weight painting mode and see if the meshes are properly weighted. Uh, select one of the vertex groups and you can see that it lights up in a red color. Just check if there aren't multiple shapes assigned uh, to one vertex group. Continuing with what we started before, I select the open mouth shape, the happy one, and I say Shift S, Cursor to selection, keep offset, and I do this for the rest as well. 
with all of them combined at one place I like to bring it up in position but first I have to bring back the character and the rig all right so here I select the mouth this is a mouth I had before and if you don't have that just place your 3d cursor as close as you can get to the position you want say shift s and cursor to selection if you're enjoying this video so far don't forget to hit the like button and if you have any questions feel free to comment down below as you can see the mesh is a bit on the small side so I scaled it up everything by 0.1 using the control we made in the previous video if you haven't seen that one check it out you can see that we have everything set up just as we need what I want to do now is I want to create a new circle and I want to create a circle that has eight vertices I like to go low and then subdivide if I need to with the knife tool I create a cross in the middle so we have a nice quadrant circle now I select the middle, use I for inset, and then with Ctrl 2 I add a subdivision modifier. Moving on, from there I select the mouth, and with the mouth selected I go into the object tab and go to instancing. Now I like to select vertices, but you can also do faces if that is uh, more convenient in your case, but I like to use vertices. And what I do next is I select this mesh, the circle mesh, select the mouth, hit Ctrl P for parenting and parent to object. And as you can see, we have now a duplifer that are instances of the circle distributed over the shape of the mouth. So I search in the collections for my mouth shape. I select it here and scale it down. And maybe you can see where this is going. So this is probably about the size I need somewhere there and then I rotate it on the x-axis or whatever axis is facing towards the camera or towards you selecting the mouth again pressing shift s cursor to selection and then selecting the circle that I named LED and then say shift s selection to cursor and there you have it now our mouth is distributed with little dots and these little dots move with the rig so that's pretty cool now the next step is to check the custom properties and see if all shapes are working. So I just toggle through some of the mouth shapes and that is working correctly. So let's keep it on this O shape. Why not? Let me make this window a bit bigger. Then I press Shift F3 to go into the node editor. Make a new material down here and call this LED. I delete the principal shader, add a new shader that is emission, connect it to the material now if we go into rendered mode, you can see there are circles are emitting light. I select the mouth, go into the object tab and there under instances, you can uncheck the viewport for a second. Uh, you can always toggle this on and off if you need. What I like to do is I want to add a shader, a converter black body. This is a Kelvin scale. So the lower you go, the warmer the tone and the higher you go, the colder the tone or bluer the tone is. And I like to go around here and just choose a random number. That's fine. So for the sphere I just created, I like to delete the materials because it's a copy of the body and I don't need the materials on there. I like to add a solidify modifier. Drag it on top of the subdivision modifier. Tweak the settings to your liking and give it a new material. And I call this glass tainted. This is where I started improvising. And um, maybe the end result isn't just as pretty as you imagined, or as I imagined, but it was just, I was just freewheeling. The tutorial is about the LED system and not my shading skills. So this is where I started experimenting. I used a glass shader uh, and with volume absorption, I tinted it with a blue color. And the volume absorption will color the depth of the sphere, to put it simply. So I noticed that the thickness wasn't really working properly and that was due to the solidify modifier. And as you can see, there's this little sphere in the middle uh, that needs to be bigger. So I just played with the solidify modifier and brought it out a bit more. And that gave me a better result. This kind of looks like a high-tech version of Gasly, don't you think? Now I selected the body and I deleted all the materials here because I don't need it. Made a new material and called this one volume added a shader and this time I use the volume scatter put it into the volume output 
So I'd like to show you one cool thing. If I select the mouth and go to the subdivision and I can play with the subdivision levels and this basically gives us a resolution slider, if you will. So let me quickly choose a example that is a bit better to see. Uh, this sad face, for example, I go back to the modifier. Let me rename this to resolution or LED resolution. And I crank up the levels for the resolution. And as you can see, this sort of simulates. Yeah, have you seen the next gen uh, movie? That's pretty much what they did there. Probably not the same way. There were different resolutions in the robots as well. That's pretty cool. Just a random fact. All we do is we change one parameter on our in our material network and we get a more pixelized version of it. So I did the same thing for the eyes, selected the eye, set the instancing to vertices and parent a copy of the LED light to the eye. So you have like the dupliverts and then place it roughly. And then with cursor to selection and selection to cursor, place it in its location. And there you go. I deleted the highlights because there was too much going on and it was a bit too dense, if you ask me. So this is pretty much what I got right now. Let's do a quick render. Uh, yeah, this is looking pretty okay. And after that, I started to rotate the control bone and set keyframes all over the timeline and just in several positions. Nothing fancy, but just from left to right, up and down, just some several several things and I didn't really know where I was going with this. So yeah, hopefully it turned out okay. <laughs> Let me know what you think down below. Then I got into the custom properties and then I started animating the properties for the mouth and the eyes. And then something I do is I set the interpolation to constant instead of linear or Bezier. And that just makes sure that it holds the uh, facial expression till the next keyframe hits. I created a Musgrave texture and I used that as input for the volume scatter density. And then I animated the seed value. And after that, I thought, let's animate the colors to resemble the mood a bit better. So for example, blue for being sad and yellow for being somewhat confused, green for happy. Yeah, so this is the end result. Um, this is the best I could do in this time of the tutorial. Let me see what you guys do. I'm really curious. You can tag me on Instagram at MVArts. And yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like down below, comment down below if you have any questions. If you wanna see more content in the future, subscribe to the channel. Also, you might like these other videos. As always, stay creative. See you next time. Ciao.